Hi, and welcome to Try Accept. I'm your host, Sean, and today I'm going to show you how to structure your Fast API application so you can better maintain your code. I'm using a basic read only application which leverages Postgres as an example. There are three main assumptions of this tutorial. You already have a project under development, you have a good understanding of Python, and you have a good understanding of databases, specifically SQL or SQL databases. This tutorial has a complexity rating of easy, meaning anyone can do it without any difficulties, given of course you have built the groundwork for your project. If you want to use this exact example, please see my previous video called Fast API Tutorial Getting Started Made Easy. The dependencies which I am using are displayed on screen. If you need to install them, use pip or conda. So what we're aiming to do is to scale this single file application. As you can see, the endpoint, the classes, and the methods, as well as all the configurations are contained within a single file. This is not sustainable. So to get started in better maintaining this application, we're going to first create an app folder. Then we're going to put main.py within this folder. I prefer to structure my application around routers or endpoints, so each one gets its own subdirectory or folder. I have seen this approach used in very large projects. An alternative and popular structure is to put all routers within the same subdirectory. We're going to name this folder get ticker record endpoint. And next we're going to make an init.py file. This will mark the directory as a Python package, which you can later import. Now we're going to make get ticker record.py and we're going to copy and paste our method get ticker record into this file. So as you can see, we need to do a number of import statements. So from fast API import API router, HTTP exception and depends. Following this, we're going to define our router. So router equals API router. And we're going to make the prefix forward slash ticker. And next we're going to change the decorator from at app.post to at router.post. Okay, so as you can see, a number of pydantic classes are not working. So we need to create a file for them to exist in. And from that file, we will import them into the get ticker record.py file. So let's go copy them from the main.py file. And we're going to make a new file in the same directory as the get ticker record.py and we're going to name it schemas.py. In this, we will paste our pydantic classes. And once again, we need to do our import statements. So from pydantic import base model. Going back to our endpoint file, we're going to need to import those classes. So from dot schemas import ticker request and ticker response. The dot represents importing something from the same directory as the current file. Okay, so moving on, we're going to take our CRUD operations. In this case, they're only read operations, so we're going to copy get recent and get oldest. Just so you, the viewer, knows, the get recent method gets the most recent record for a given table in a database, and the get oldest method gets the oldest record for a given table in a database. We're going to make a new folder within app called common. Common will be used to hold all methods and functions which could be used across different endpoints. So it is a shared folder for all endpoints. In this case, if you have another endpoint that uses the same CRUD functions as get ticker record does, then you would import them from the common folder. We're going to name this file crud.py and we're going to paste our functions into it. Now that's done, we're going to go back to the main file and copy the def get db method. And we're going to move it to our CRUD file for the same reasons we moved get recent and get oldest. Next, we're going to get all our configurations for the database and paste them into our CRUD file as well.
it would actually be better practice to have a config file to hold the database connection string and it would be even better practice to not have the database connection string in the application at all but rather read it in from a service such as Azure Key Vault but for the purpose of this demonstration the connection string being in the application is perfectly fine. We got a number of import statements which we need to move from the main file to the CRUD file. Finally, we're gonna to have to move the classes for the various tables. And actually, as you can see, both tables have the exact same schema. So if you look at them in a database, they have the same columns with the same data types for each column. It would not be considered sustainable to just copy and paste the same class with different names each time. So I'm gonna actually show you how to make a function which would dynamically change the table name allowing you to query many different tables without needing to create many, many different uh, classes for each table. But before that, I'm going to remove them and remove any unneeded import statements from the main file. Okay, so now we're going to build the get table function. Def get table, it's going to take the argument table name Then we're going to assign dynamic base, the declarative base, with the argument class registry equals dict. Then we have to define the class and we're going to name it ticker model. In this case, it's going to take the argument dynamic base. So table name equals dynamic base. And then it's going to have the same columns with the same data types for all tables. And then we're going to return ticker model. Quick bug fix. I was looking back through my code and I found an issue. Class registry is not spelled correctly. It is not spelled with that last E, so you must remove it. Okay, so now that's done, you need to go back to the get ticker record.py file and we need to start importing the classes and methods. From dot dot common dot crud import get db get recent get oldest and get table. The dot dot represents going back two directories and entering into the common directory and then pulling from the file crud. So now we're going to implement the method get table. First, we're going to change the valid tickers dictionary to just be a key value pair of the ticker and the table name. Google pairs with Google underscore historical and Microsoft pairs with Microsoft underscore historical. We're going to change the table variable. So now it equals get table and we're going to access the uh, valid tickers dictionary with the key ticker request dot ticker. This will get us the value for that tickers table. In the decorator router.post, we have the value forward slash ticker forward slash record, yet in the router we have the prefix ticker. This means that in a URL this would be ticker ticker record. So we're going to remove ticker from the decorator. Moving back to the main file, we need to give the statement if name equals main uvcorn.run a home. So we're going to make a run application.py file outside of the application folder or the application directory. We're now going to copy and paste that code into the run application.py file. We need to do the import statements. So from app.main import app and also we need to import uvcorn. So import uvcorn. We're now going to remove this code from the main file. 
Finally, we need to mount our endpoint or our router to the application. First, we need to import it. So from get ticker record endpoint, import get ticker record. Finally, we write app.include router get ticker record dot router. And as you can see, you can run the application. So going to localhost on port 5000 forward slash docs, we can see the Swagger documentation. And as you can see, we can do various queries for the different tickers, recent oldest and Microsoft Google. That's all for today. If you'd like to support the channel, please subscribe for more or give the video a like. If you want to check out my more entertainment based content, please visit my alternative channel called If Else. Thank you.